As we spend more and more time with our camera, taking more and more pictures and photographs, we need a way to quickly see them all, to be able to assess them as well as organise them before deciding which ones we want to open up in Photoshop. Now using the file and the open command is fine, but if we plan to work with a lot of images it can be very, very tedious. I can open images one by one, but I don't have access easily to a lot of information about the images. Or, or any ability to catalogue or find an image. Now fortunately Photoshop comes with a program called Bridge, which is for short called a DAM and for long it's called a Digital Asset Manager. And this allows us not only to view the files, but also do other things like adding keywords, metadata and filtering our images. And it's far easier to use Bridge to navigate the folders on your hard drive and to open images than it is to do it, to do it any other way. Now to open Bridge I can use the File menu, which is going to be File and Browsing Bridge, or we can use the keyboard shortcut of Alt, Control and O. Now this will bring up Bridge in its default view, like this. Now let's have a quick look at the structure. Now at the top here we've got the menu bar. Underneath that to the left we've got some presets so we can access things like the down photo downloader and we can go to Adobe Camera Raw. Over on the right here we've got some workspaces which we'll be looking at in more detail in a second. Now underneath this we've got the breadcrumb trail which is where we can navigate right down to the folder that these images are in. And over to the right we've got some sorting options. Now the main panel itself is divided into three sections by these two vertical bars. And we can change the percentage of which of these bars occupies more space by dragging on this little symbol here, this little like an equal sign. And the same on this side. Now within each of these panel groups we've got sub-panels. Here we can see we've got the favourites, we've got folders and we've got a sub-panel divider. So here again if I hover over that I can drag that up and down. And the same over at this side. And here you can see I've got some more sub-panels. I've got a keywords panel and the metadata panel. Now at the bottom we've got a slider so we can make the thumbnails bigger or smaller and we've got some custom, some just different custom views. Now this layout is the default or what they call the essentials workspace and this isn't always ideal. Now we can customize this to best suit our workflow and save it out as, a, as a, an, a, our own custom workspace. Now let me show you my custom workspace and how easy it is to do. Okay. Well over here if you look we've got the preview panel. Now this is fairly small and I will prefer my preview panel to be in the middle here where I've got a nice big area so I can see a nice big preview. So all I do is I go and click and drag on the tab where the word preview is and I drag it in until I get a blue line going all the way around and then I just let go and I drop that panel into the middle. So now my preview panel is in the middle. I prefer the content panel which is the content of whichever folder we happen to be looking at over here on the right hand side. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag the content folder and wait again till I get those lines going all the way around and drop it in. So I've now got content keywords and metadata and I've got my preview panel here so now if I click on an image I get a nice big preview in the middle that I can see. Now I do like metadata and keywords to be down with filter and collections to keep them all together. So I've just got my content on this side. So again I'm going to grab the keywords panel, I'm going to drag it down and just dock it with filter and collections. And I'll do the same with my metadata panel. So I'll have all them in together. So I've got filter collections, keywords and metadata all together in one place. I've got my content which is what's in the folder I'm looking at and I've got my preview in the middle. 
Now I've got here, we've got the favourites and we've got folders. And what I'd like to do is to just make that a little bigger to just give a little bit more to the folders because that's important for me to be able to navigate through the whole of my folder structure. And if I want to, I can make some favourites and add them to the favourites panel. Now, to be honest, the favourites panel I don't use a lot, so you can actually switch panels off if you don't use them. Now, all the panels are available in the window menu. So anything that's got a tick next to it means the panel is visible. Well, if I don't want the favourites panel, I'm just going to click on that and that will take the favourites panel away. If I want it back, I can just go back to window and put a tick back in the favourites panel. Right, now I've done all that, I've got the workspace that I want to work with, I can now save it out. So I'm going to go over to this little down arrow here, and I'm going to select new workspace. I'm going to give it a name, I'll call it Ken Workspace. I'll leave the tick in save window location, and I'll save the sort order, and I'll click save. And now you can see it appears now that I've got my own workspace. And I've got these others I can go at as well. So if I quickly want to go to the output workspace, I can. Or I can go to the film strip. Or I can go back to my own workspace now, my Ken workspace. So that's it. That wraps up our little conversation on the Adobe Bridge and how to make a customised workspace to suit your workflow. I hope that was useful. I'll see you in the next video.